The novel Ben Sinister starts with the story of a man who's anxiously waiting in a hospital for information regarding his wife who has recently suffered an accident. Rarely do dystopian literature which talks about totalitarian regimes deal with something very personal and that is what sets this novel apart. Hi, this is Gautam and for today's episode we'll be looking at the no dystopian classic Ben Sinister written by Vladimir Nabokov. If you're interested in dystopian literature, do look at the description for the playlist. Ben Sinister narrates a series of events which happens in the life of Adam Krug, a philosophy teacher in the university. He is living under a totalitarian regime run by his former schoolmate who is, uh, I don't know, funnily nicknamed as the Toad. We are taken through several pages uh, narrating how uh, Toad or the dictator is controlling different aspects of the state. The different professors who are in the university, you know, call a meeting and then they, they talk to Adam Krupp. They tell the philosophy teacher, see, after all, the dictator is your former schoolmate. Why don't you go and talk to him? Why don't you convince him, you know, accept uh, certain demands which he's placing on you and everything will be fine and the university will be saved. Vladimir Nabokov does not write a story about the totalitarian regime's control of media, the sex life of individuals and the bureaucracy. It is much more personal. It's more about what happens to the individual uh, when he feels threatened, when he rises up against the state. It's not about the individual himself, but about the individuals who are surrounding him, who make his life fulfilling because what happens to his friends or what is the threat which could happen with what is the threat which is facing his eight-year-old son David. And that leads to a series of ethical questions which the author tries to explore. The questions like, should one compromise his personal ideals if his loved ones are threatened? How far could one fight against a system which is much more powerful than an individual? You know, at times, is it better to fight against the state or, you know, simply just join them because you're powerless? You know, these type of ethical questions and dilemmas sets uh, Ben Sinister apart from the conventional ones which you've seen so far in the series. Ben Sinister feels more real, it feels more grounded and it could happen to any individual like any of us if you try to stand up against a very strong state. Because it's not that we don't live in a world where totalitarian regimes exist. For example, you can, you can take, the, uh, take the issue of China because in, in the previous episode under India's China's Challenge, you know, there were several chapters in which he talks about how uh, Tibet or how Xinjiang provinces, you know, is severely controlled uh, by China. So it is much more relevant even in today's world because the novel feels grounded. And uh, before I close the review, it would be a crime if I do not, uh, you know, mention regarding the literary genius of Vladimir Nabokov. You know, rather than, rather than narrating that, I think I just read uh, a passage introducing the protagonist, the description of the protagonist, not introducing him exactly. And it doesn't come in the first few pages. It comes in page number 33. I'll just read it for you. It goes, They were interrupted by the president, who stood in the middle of the room, asking for attention and uh, lightly clapping his hands. The person whose name had just been mentioned, Professor Adam Krug, the philosopher, was seated somewhat apart from the rest, deep in a cretoned armchair with his hairy hands on his arms. He was a big heavy man in his early forties with untidy, dusty or faintly grisened looks and roughly hewn face suggestive of the uncouth chess master or the morose composer but more intelligent. The strong compact dusky forehead had a peculiar hermetic aspect, a bank face, a prison wall, which, bore, which the bros of the thinkers possess. The brain consisted of water, various chemical compounds and a group of highly specialized fats. The pale steely eyes were half closed in their squashed orbits under the shaggy eyebrows which had protected them once from the poisonous droppings of extinct birds. Scheider's hypothesis. The ears were of go goodly size with hair inside. Two deep folds of flesh diverged from the nose along with large cheeks. The morning had been shaveless. He wore a barely creased dark suit and a bow tie, always the same. His of violets with pure white and tie, here is a bella, interneural masses and a triple's left hind wing. 
the not so recent collar was of the low open variety that is with a comfortable triangular shape for his namesake's apple. Thick soled shoes and old fashioned black spats were the distinctive characters of his feet. What else? Oh, yes, the absent minded beat of his forefinger against the arm of his chair. You read the novel, you'll be treated with several passages like that. And uh, that's the review for today. So if you like the video, do like, comment, and subscribe. That's it. For